So this is an example of one entry, uh, Dictibase. So the URL is here. The contact information, the main help desk is there. Uh, it's free for use. Okay, and then there's different types of data types. And this is where it's, it's not very pretty because we don't have a, a nice way, nice vocabulary to capture all this. Uh, the, cur the curation is done manually. The standards are, you know, so we're using gene ontology, uh, some anatomy ontology, a standard gene nomenclature. Uh, there's data in the FASTA, OBO, GAF, GFF3 formats. Um, so it covers taxonomy of Dictacium, Dyscoidum, and other subspecies. The data was available in HTML, text, and some reports. Okay, so uh, there was no versioning policy in the database at that point. Um, and then publications, the, the uh, Wikipedia. We also had the, you know, the idea of quitting if you have a Twitter or if you have any other kind of social uh, media access to the information in the database. Oh, yeah, yeah. and then the tools available. Okay, so this is the, the, what we had put together maybe two years ago. And then we've been trying to, again, periodically talk with all the other groups doing similar things and refining this model. Um, so what we have right now is an implementation of BioDB Core at the BioSharing site. Okay, and this was completely developed by uh, Philippe Cocacera. Uh, so on their website, you have three tabs. You can look at the policies and the standards and the databases. So the BioDB Core uh, information for databases you can fa find here. And so with you, oh. Okay, I wasn't expecting this one to be right here. <laughs> but we published this uh, in 2011, both in an NER database um, issue, as well as at the same time in the database journal. Okay, so just to show what we really wanted to do at that stage was to get many of the stakeholders involved and, you know, uh, agree to participate to this and if they knew of new efforts to make sure that we would include them as we move forward. Um, yes, I don't know what the other side was doing there. I'm not going to talk about the website yet. Uh, so, so what we want to do is to, like I said, you know, to make the data public and linked, uh, that we reuse existing stuff and collaborate with people doing, you know, what I would call sub-modules of what we're interested in. Uh, and so we have developed a, a RDF model uh, based on a mix of what's in BioSiteMap, Miriam, NIF, Dublin Core, Darwin Core. So we had proposed a format that we circulated amongst the people that were part of the group at that stage. But obviously that's still open to change if, uh, you know, if there's a better way to do it. We just, essentially what we had in mind was that this, the biggest other players were uh, the NIF and um, the site of uh, bioinformatics.org that had you know, some information about databases in a somewhat structured way. And so what we wanted to do was for each of the groups to capture what we, fit, what we felt was within our scope. You know? For example, NIF has a lot of information, a lot of it uh, to do with, obviously, neurobiology. So they might not capture the dictocelium databases. So you know, we just felt it was important that everybody stay con connected to their own community but then at the end that we could have some kind of hub that would uh, be able to provide you know, all the information in a standard format between all the different stakeholders here. And define extension mechanism. So the idea here is that not everybody wants to capture the same information about resources. You know? So depending on your specific needs, you might uh, want to do something slightly different. So, we had what we felt was absolutely essential for BioDB Core, but we realized other groups want to, you know, add other stuff and so to try to find ways to have a minimal format plus ways to extend that format. Okay, so there's a website here where you can uh, actually access the BioSharing uh, BioDB Core page. So this is, this is where the other slide should have been. 
And so that's an example of an entry. So what, what we did so far is that uh, Michael Galperin, who's the editor of the Nucleic Acids Research Database issue for several years, uh, was really on board with this because for him it was hard to maintain his list of databases. I suppose you guys have seen it. And so, you know, what we, what we proposed to him is that we would manage the list. And so whenever there was a new paper in Nucleic Acids Research Database issue, he would specifically ask the submitters to, you know, fill in the form uh, of the information we needed for a BioDB core entry and that would get submitted to us. And so, but at first we didn't have any infrastructure. So it all came in hundreds of different Excel spreadsheets with no controlled vocabularies or anything like this. So the first, so what we really wanted to do was to have some kind of, you know, initial corpus that we would populate there. And then tell researchers, you know, let's say as this entry is created, we can tell researchers to go and provide any additional information that they didn't provide in the first place. Okay, so this was just to try to get people, uh, the database maintainers, to start some good practices with respect to describing their database. Uh, so again, this is all the fields I talked about before. And so, yeah. So what we have done until now is manually created the records from the data uh, provided by Michael Galperin, essentially. And also, uh, Philip has started to enter some stuff from the Life Science Registry. Uh, but, you know, we haven't made enough progress there. And, uh, well, I also want to think about what's the best way of doing this before we're just going to go through the 2,000 entries manually. Like, to me, that didn't seem like the best solution. Um, yeah, so we've entered perhaps 10% of what we have, and it's even then it's a small fraction of what's out there. So, yeah, how should we, how should we, you know, go about doing this in the future? So, ideally, of course, the database provider would maintain their own description of their database. So we have something on the site where you can claim ownership of. Uh, of your resource, and then you're, you can edit the, the different fields. But you know, then we would also need to prompt people regularly to make sure that it's up to date and so on. So, um, yeah. So the other thing is to encourage best practice, like I mentioned, uh, the database journal and nucleic acids journal uh, research are requesting people to provide their BioDB core information. So you know, we were really hoping to put some peer pressure uh, on people to. Uh, to do this. And the other thing is, you know, having the Biocuration Society seal of approval on this, you know, we thought would be, a, once there's enough of a corpus, would be an incentive as well. So I don't talk about the BioDB 100, I don't know if you guys are familiar with it. Yeah. So this was something that was started and I haven't heard back, so. Um, yeah, so what, what do we want to do next? So we want to continue, you know, uh, forging collaborations with people providing similar resources, uh, refining the scope because, you know, maybe there's things that need to be improved, uh, integrate more semantic support. Like I said, right now, this is just mostly in free text. And it's, I mean, obviously, if we're going to do this kind of resource, if it's in free text, it, it doesn't serve the purpose. Uh, and then, you know, we'd like to support querying system for, like I said, the use of the researchers and, uh, yeah, whoever is interested in, in finding, you know, resor uh, resources specific to certain data types. Uh, and then, obviously, we want to implement validation tests for all the information that's in there and set up mechanisms for exchange, uh, exchanging the data among the different uh, collaborating groups. Well, so this slide is to show that we've started to implement, uh, you know, semantic support for, for BioDB Core. So we've been talking to several people. Uh, so this is the collaborations we have so far on this. Is this the same slide? Yeah. Yeah. So again, we're really into uh, identifying resources rather than starting from scratch. So the idea was really to collaborate with any other group doing similar things. Uh, 
And so this is what I really wanted to show is, you know, why I'm here this week and what I'm hoping to gain is, you know, I'd like to first of all know where BioDBCar fits within all the other similar resources that exist as of today. So we started this, like I said, about three years ago. So I know things are evolving rapidly. Uh, then see how, you know, we can collaborate with other groups. Uh, and then the third thing is very important is to try to see if we can find a better system for creating and maintaining the BioDB core records because it's not going to be possible to ask people to come in and fill that form every six months or whatever. So there needs to be a system where, you know, the, this information that is necessary is available somewhere and we can just pull it in. And uh, we'll see if we need further uh, vocabularies or ontologies to uh, describe the data that's in BioDB core. Okay, and so that's all I have. And I wanted to thank the people who collaborated on the project. Thank you.